the same time, do you want to pick a hero like Luna? Wow, they go oh, back for the, be the visage. visage. I mean... So they didn't take the Pango the mid, then? Is that what it is? We're taking it, Pango mid something. or a Legion mid? It could be a Pango mid. It could be a Legion mid. It could be a Pango 4, a Hoodwing 5. Of course, there is that flexibility between the 4 and 5 with the Hoodwing, but don't think that's going to feel too great. But I guess at the end of the day, the Visage is the only thing that worked in Arkosh's previous draft. So maybe banking on this idea that we're going to have a slightly superior matchup. Unfortunately, Drow is really good versus Visage. And oh. you do have the stage of the game where you run at him, but at the same time, I don't know. Split shot is just so good at killing go all the way through those birds. This is Owie Visage, is what it is. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Owie is known to play a five Visage actually pretty heavily. Um, I, it was he was like one of the only people that still manages to run it, and I think that's where they're going with this. Probably gonna be Gremlo on the Hoodwing since I know he likes the hero, and they're gonna be seeing a Monkey's Forever Pango to the off lane. Probably the mid Legion commander here for Canis Vulpus. That would make the most sense based on the fact that Aoi's standing in for them because I know he likes this in the five. And it could be yeah. like a nice bait by Arkosh uh, if they think this is going to be like a, a Visage offlane. But I mean, Drow's pretty good into Pango as well. Yeah, the Drow doesn't really care, to be honest. To be frank, you just can lane versus all of these heroes on the Arkosh side. You only really need to be scared of the Hoodwink getting on top of you, catching you off guard, and then whenever the Pango hits level 6, you definitely need to consider which side of the map you're playing on, as we already saw what happens whenever a Drow does get hung out to dry. But that's where I feel like Arkosh, if they're going to go for a lineup like this, they need something that's going to be able to not only bust down these towers, but also give them a little bit more of that easy initiation, whether it's coming from a Blink Dagger, it's inherent in the hero, because otherwise, they have a lot of lockdown, they've got a lot of damage, they've got a lot of control, but they don't have a lot of that easy jump. They're going to be running out their opponents in a lot of these situations, and I'm just afraid that if Lava walk away from them, they're not actually able going to be going to be able to finish off any of these kills. It's just a little bit sad, and they do also ban out the PL, so... There you go. I think Pillhorse's best hero is now kind of thrown away. Maybe the PA is next up. Sorry, I'm just over here chuckling at the usage of the Slack's voice line every yeah. every moment it comes through. It's just, it's so good. So good. Great reference. Um, they ban out the Tidehunter, still in the pool, surprisingly, all the way in the last phase. But it is going to be a hero here for Frank, most likely, that they need to pick up. Um, and the question is, you know, what is it going to be? Like you said, Pillhorse's hero is still available, but... 10 seconds. This is really weird. Lava got Radiant and second pick, I just realized. Yeah, you don't really like to see that, unfortunately. It, it, it's honestly, I think the first time we're seeing it, it, it feels weird because it's almost like the pick order is stacked well, incorrectly. Well, Lava it, had the decision. Like, they chose yeah. Radiant in lobby, and then we're like, all right, well, that's a little weird. And then Arkosh is like, first pick. And we're like, all right. Yeah, see how it pays off for them. We'll see how it goes. Um, they really wanted that hoodwink, man. Now we're gonna see yeah. uh Arkosh here pick up Pale Horse's hero most likely uh, to round this out. They'll be able to count it out with Frank. But you just gotta pick something that's strong in lane at this point. You can't keep giving Pale Horse like the like these like weak lane heroes, like the Drow Ranger earlier. It was just it did not have a good time. He did have Razor in the last game, which had a great lane, but it just didn't scale like they needed it to. He could not come online in the mid game. You yeah, gotta be a I mean, playmaker, man. I don't know what it can be, though. You just go for the Sven, take a page out of Hikori's book, just try to run at your opponents as much as you can. I mean, that's the what Sven's happened to them. good. Yeah, I think you just take the Sven, go Blink Dagger. You got Visage, Pango, all them. That wouldn't be bad. Okay, they go for his uh, Lashrek. I actually like this, because Pale Horse does play this quite a bit. And it is a solid Lesh pick. You can just... Uh, I think you can go Blink Dagger here on Lesh pretty, re pretty reliably and be uh, doing a lot of work. Yeah, and it does give you that final agency that Arkosh feel like they've been lacking through the, really all of their drafts, where finally we push onto the tower, we kill the tower with one spell, and then we go to the next objective. It gives them that really easy rotation where they can finally play up and make a lot of these plays. And unfortunately, the only save for it is going to be that press the attack, so we are going to need them syncing up a little bit more in Dawnbreaker. Okay. That is an interesting pick because 
really, you don't have that much setup aside from Leo style just running in. I don't think the Fire Blast chains immediately into the Solar Guardian stun. So we'll have to see how Frank decides to play it here. But I do love this Leshrac pick. I think finally they're going to be able to get aggressive on the enemy team's side of the map, get that bottom tier one tower early, and then push into the enemy team's jungle. I think this is going to be, if anything, their best shot at just a normal game of Dota. And fingers crossed here, Aoi's going to add a little bit of that leadership that they might have been lacking with the previous players. So I definitely nailed it on the Visage being played by Aoi here. Um, but they have swapped the Legion Lashrac. That's going to be a safe lane Legion commander potentially, or he's going to the mid lane uh, on the Legion. I mean, Pale Horse did take mid lane last game, so it's not like it's something they are completely unfamiliar with. I feel like the Legion into Ember matchup is pretty dang good. They might as well take it since they have it, but uh, we'll see what they end up doing here um, as Candace Volp is going to be the one grabbing the Lush. But that's that last pick Dawnbreaker is going to be really good at helping keep this Drow Ranger alive in these fights if they do manage to get on top of her. So that is a pretty nice last pick. Frank does need to be careful. If Monkeys Forever does start the fight nicely, there's a very real possibility of him solar guarding in immediately into a pango roll, and then the fight breaks apart, and then you lose the hero you're trying to save. But that's also where Arkosh need to really appraise their kills and what they need to expend to finish off a lot of these picks, because if you start to slip away, they are, again, going to have to run at you, and that's where Lava, they just simply do damage while walking away, and uh, I'm really scared of how Wheel Style is actually going to be able to play his game. Of course, there is that blink duel. There is that guaranteed threat that Leo Style is going to need to be concerned about. But every other member of Arkosh is incredibly vulnerable in those early stages. All right, we'll see how it goes, everyone. This is game number two of Lava versus Arkosh. Arkosh on their fourth game here today. Lava going to be doing the same thing with them after as they've got a doubleheader of their own. Gonna be finishing up our fourth and final series of the day. They will be taking on Thunder Predator. So going against their uh, previous org, which uh, should be fun. I think people have been really excited to watch that game for quite a while here. Oh, all right. Well, happened to find the drow there. Kataro is just like pretending like that didn't happen. Thirty seconds. And yeah, counting. and at the very least, you do have Kataro on a hero that isn't able to make his own space. A lot of times, Kataro just ends up on these hard farmers that are also just as much a part about taking farm away from the enemy. So he needs to rely and lean way more on his teammates in this game than I think anything else he's really been tested with. And unfortunately, all the deuce got out the mid ward, so goodbye, Candice Volpus. Well, at least he gets the deny off this time, whereas previously uh, he did lose uh or they did go ahead and get that d ward so no xp no gold gonna be uh transitioned over but two two on the bounty runes and we are underway the mid lane lashrak so it is gonna go ahead and be a safe lane legion commander yeah it's an interesting choice i think that they really would have been happy with both lane situations but also saying i get to play legion commander versus this dark willow Moose isn't going to nearly have as many aggressive potential uh, plays that he otherwise would on the Lesh Rack. If the Lesh Rack gets a little bit too out of line, you could definitely see him going down early. But that's also where we need our Hoodwink in there. Gremlo blocking up the large camp, but they need someone in lane here with them. Unfortunately, Frank is on one of the strongest offlaners in the entire game, and that's where Gremlo really is on a hero whose heyday is a little bit past he is going to need to be very careful especially before he hits level two otherwise it's very easy for them to set up with the bramble maze and especially once frank hits level two there's just no other hero who has quite that power spike yeah absolutely mid lane canis vulpus gonna have his work cut out for him obviously leo style pretty dang good on this ember spirit but actually he started off five and three not a bad showing uh, on these first two waves. Oh, misses a few there to the tower, though. What can you do? What can you do, indeed? But we'll have to see what Kanan's Vulpus goes for if we see the more direct build where he immediately goes for points into the Edict or nice dodge from Leo Style there. Or if he goes for more points into the Lightning Storm, which will even out that matchup and that race when it comes to how much damage can you actually block with the Flame Guard. But Kanan's Vulpus does need to be very careful. Every single time he does miss that Split Earth, that's a chance where Leo Style could get very, very aggressive on him, and he definitely doesn't want to give away his lane. Yeah, I think a lot of times we see the 202 and then maxing out the. Whoa! Deep behind the tower. Monkey's Forever grabs first blood, but dies for the kill. I mean, 
definitely worth it as he takes down that Drow Ranger, but um, as I was saying, I, I think a lot of people go for the 202 on Leshrac and then max out that Edict so they have that tower taking potential. Yeah, it's really just how fast I think they want to play, and I do think they want to play incredibly fast, and unfortunately, Aoi, he's trying to get run down here, but Grave Chill, I mean, he's fast. He gets to walk away, and Kataro actually lost uh, an entire wave and a half there underneath the tower just because of how forced in it was by the spells that monkeys used to get that kill. So it's an unfortunate death for Kataro. His CS isn't looking too shabby, of course. He is just playing Drow in a lane where they have to commit quite heavily for them to actually get any danger onto him. But at the same time, I think MGZ just needs to make himself a bigger target. And, well, they're looking at him, but kind of split damage. Uh, playing Kelhorst, though, falling incredibly low. He's just, yeah. sure, one more auto attack from Frank. It's Ooh. not enough. Barely keeps himself alive with the press of the attack. That little bonus armor from the tower as well might have been enough to save him. He's going to get salved up by Gremlo. Managing to dodge out those brambles were huge for Pale Horse there. Yeah, you don't want to be forced to commit your press the attack too early. And I don't know, I think they really don't want to start these engagements onto the LC. They always want to look for Gremlin instead. And I think that's where Moose hiding his hero here. It's very, very nifty. It's a good block up as well, but oh, good movement from Gremlo. The hit though. Yeah. Managed to get that slow and find the kill there. Just on the very edge of that stun. Bottom lane, where are we at on CS here? Drow doing really well. 17 and 5. Monkey's not trailing by too much. That's actually a pretty big wave here underneath his tower. Can pick up a lot of these. Yeah. Owie, he keeps on actually trying to jumps get forward for cool. Kataro. Do they have... I mean, they've got the Grave Chill if he can get in range, but the body block from MJZ gonna prevent it. Nice oh, so uh, aggression there for sure, but... Owie, he really wants to save this soul assumption to get on top of that Drow. Oh. And he nice. pops it. That ward has uh, already paid for itself. No, well, Owie actually might pay for that with his life. He's getting chased down. And gets that. Oh, gets the grave chill off. He's gonna make it. Yeah, and they do constantly need to be careful here. But monkeys, okay. They're gonna turn around. Like Swash the fourth. They get him. The two points in the soul assumption. The burst damage was there. Owie. He's gonna just toss a salve to monkeys before he dies. He says, "Good job, comrade. I'll be back." Yeah, they're really not respecting this Visage hero in the same kind of way that they weren't respecting it in game one, where they're getting caught off guard in a lot of these situations, and the turn just keeps on happening. They really need to kind of hold and steal themselves here, because once the lane sizzles down, Kataro just gets to farm, and then suddenly you can't do anything versus the Drow. Instead, they're forcing MJZ to play so close to the Drow Ranger, and they're really not getting these trades that they're heavily looking for on the Lava side. And maybe that is just the owie effect. Of course, once Monkeys is on his lonesome, it is very difficult for him to play. And there was the bottle refill coming from the Visage. But still, pretty nice. Nice little 1v1 uh, exchange there. Goes the way of the Dark Willow. Thanks to the Fairy Fire and the Stick. It will just out-sustain that uh, Hoodwink. Also, one of the highest base attack time heroes in the game going against one of the lowest base... Actually, the lowest base attack time hero in the game, if I'm not mistaken, right? Hoodwink, isn't yep. she actually lower than Treant? Yep, she is lower than Treant, which is very, very sad. But, you know, that's why you have Acorn Shot, so you don't actually need to right-click. And you get another bottle refill over to Canis Vulpus. He's getting a lot of love from his supports, which is going to put him just that little bit further ahead. And once you hit level 6, you're going to see him explode in the farming department. But, okay. It's a nice shackle into the split nice. earth. Leo style goes down and now you can't tp out here on the dark will you just came mid and owie is here to provide all of the vision that they need to help bring down this dark will gonna start building up that soul assumption damage and my god that is one heck of a nuke yeah i mean it just every single time owie is finding it he's not taking that much from monkeys either he's trying to give the pango as much soul xp as possible and it's interesting to see them go for the smoke up right now. I think it's because the wave is pushing in, so they know that Katara, if he wants any of this farm, is going to need to be a little bit further. Ooh, up. what a silence. Nice silence. Yeah. Holds him in place. They could try and turn around onto MJZ here, but they really want to find the drought. It's just not going to happen. Owie does have that grave chill, but I think they're just going to rely on monkeys to be the one to close the gap. Another shackle out onto the drown, but they have no spells left in the tank, so. Kataro gonna be safe once again. The smoke ends up netting them another kill. Yeah, 
Yeah. And these kills are so important for them actually getting the snowball going. Of course, Owie doesn't want to be the one to take this tome. He wants to give it over to his hoodlink, so that way we can see plays made with that sharpshooter and also making the time to stack for Canis Vulpus. And this is exactly what you want for your last track. Right at the seven minute mark, farm that huge large camp stack, get a bunch of your tier one items, and look towards those boots of travel that are just going to allow him to be absolutely everywhere. Elhor is getting dove here in the top lane. Playing incredibly low, he might. Oh, he doesn't oh, have the duel. mana for a duel. Otherwise, he can. Oh. Can he get it in time? He does, and he gets the win, just in time. Monkeys forever with the TPN. Gonna chase down Frank here in the trees, and he grabs the kill there with the help of Gremlo. Did you think you were hunting me? Oh, and this is so poorly timed. Guitaro just TP top, thinking that it was going to be too much pressure after Monkeys hit six bottom. But now there is a full creep wave bottom that he no longer has the right to farm. So. That is just horrifically timed for Lava. They're just getting nothing now across the map. Yeah, they're getting, they're losing creeps in both side lanes. The only one that, that you know, manager finding anything is Leo style in mid, but Arkosh, they didn't miss a beat. Like their heroes are here ready to farm this up. Like you said, Monkey's coming to the top lane. Doesn't have a lot of mana, but his courier, I'm sure bringing some, yeah, raindrops as well as a clarity. He'll be topped off in no time. It just feels like Lava are now being forced to take the scraps almost, and that's where if they can pause the game while they still have a lead, they just get to maintain that lead going forward into this mid game. They still have to be very cautious about Leo style. He really is the X factor in this game. Of course, having a haste rune as well, he's just going to be able to make so many plays in the next minute here, but you still have to be very mindful. If you let this Ember Spirit get onto your supports, that is Leo Style's entrance back into this game and probably the beginning of a snowball effect where you suddenly can't show your face on a lot of these cores. Until then though, as long as they can keep, keep this game almost stalemated, it's going to heavily favor them. And already, the Lush is making his wave towards that bottom tower, maxed out Edict. Finally, we're gonna see that agency that Arkash has been missing for so long. Yeah, top lane. They're trying to make a play here onto Monkeys. The Gust does come through. Fine. But it looks like he is going to be all right. Has another swashbuckle. Ooh. Doesn't manage to connect on that split shot. And Monkeys, he's got to be careful. Duked into the trees. Yeah, this guy, he's good. Bottom, Bottom lane. They manage to lose Lesh. And Leo Style comes in as well. Pale Horse falling low. He gets clipped by that uh, slide of fist. Gremlo. Now on the run, no spells left. Just trying to juke it out into the trees. Able to block a lot of vision for a while, but ends up being a double kill. You said that haste rune was going to be his entrance back into the game, and he just busted down those doors. Yeah, it, it was a dive play. It was them going for the dual damage onto the Ember Spirit because they thought that there wouldn't be that support in time, but that's where you're playing versus a Dawnbreaker. There's always going to be support in time, and I think moves will be pretty easily cleaned up here yeah it's either alley or yeah, yeah get it with the second alley. storm form but at the same time you can't give those plays over to leo style they have to look for these bait plays where they force off the solar guardian and then immediately get aggressive i think that's where canis volpus is doing exactly what he needs going immediately back towards this bottom tower knowing the glyph has already been committed this edict will just immediately melt through it but when they eventually break towards that mid tower it's got to be just a little bit cleaner otherwise Frank has that easy rotation, and unfortunately, now with Moose also having his level 6, that counter turn is just going to be so vicious from Lava, and if Arkosh don't respect it, you are going to feel that hurt. Yeah, Monkeys Forever has definitely doing a pretty good job this game, but he is struggling in the net worth department. I mean, had to kind of sit in lane with some friends. Top lane, Pale Horse, been scouted here by Leo Style. He's got an invis run, and he is walking away from his team and into the enemies. Frank here... You will see him. Up around on the backside, they do get scouted here by potentially the other sides. Drop a sentry though, they see Ember Spirit just barely. There's gonna be the Terrorize coming through, but Pale Horse, if he can get in range for the duel, able to escape just in time. Monkey's Forever getting on top of the Draw Ranger here, but no real way to finish her off. Maybe with the help of Legion Commander in the duel, they managed to take him down. Nice stun there from Aoi to stop that Starbreaker and MJZ. Trying to dive the tower here with Leo Style as he goes underneath the tower. Able to take down Gremlo there on the hoodwing. Pale Horse on the run. There it is. The call in from Frank. And we'll finish off that Legion Commander. The one position Legion Commander that is. And Frank with another okay, Meteor man. Hammer build. Oh no. Penis Vulpus. No. He got the tower, Copium. But yeah, losing his life there, not ideal. Oh no, he... 
it, Wheel style, he's just too good. He's light dodges out the splitter if it was timed on the TP. He gets the tower, like you said, but it's still a little bit sad. At least it looks like they're going to claim Frank top, but oh, he can't turn. Gremlo? He's got him. <laughs> he walks right back into it. I mean, Gremlo's still going to burn. That's a four level ignite, I think. Yeah, it is. That was a lot of damage. Now, slight chains onto monkeys forever. He's got a splash plug on one, but he can't outrun Leo style. He is now level 11, top of the net worth chart here. I mean, this guy's got 6k to his name. He's owning on this Ember. In a game that felt like it was going to heavily slow down for him, it just immediately turns back up. It it's really comes back to that one misplayed bottom, and now suddenly you're level 12, 12 minutes into the game. You've got 1,000 GPM, and it just feels like this Ember can do whatever he wants. He even buys the Mithril Hammer before the Javelin. I, I don't even know if that's right, but it just feels like Leo Style can make these plays knowing that there really isn't anyone to go versus him right now. The best hero to do that is Canis Vulpus, but Canis Vulpus, he's gone for the fight build. He's went for the Kaya first, thinking he'd need that early game damage, and same with Monkeys, not going for that Blink Dagger immediately. It's still very difficult for Arnkosh to start these fights. This is a nice position, though. If they could get behind the Lava lineup, find that Drow immediately, that's exactly what they want, but... Unfortunately, I think Lava are a little bit too aware here, especially with where Aoi is playing. But yeah, they managed to blow up the Hoodwink. Pretty quick, pretty quick maneuver there. Frank should be fine as he's going to be able to escape. Ember Spirit back across the mid lane. Looks like he's going to be heading top, but Monkeys, he's got another Swashbuckle. He's got the slow as well if he wants to use it. He's trying to go ahead and use that Rolling Thunder. Just kind of baiting out of MJZ, but the duel on the back side finds the kill onto Frank. Yeah. Leo style. He yeah, is alone, but he's got remnants to work with. Oh, interesting. He went back to the one here in mid. Stun number one comes through. One remnant still remains, but... Oh my goodness, that was a lot of damage. But there's the shackle into the split earth. Leo style, you got cocky, son. Didn't see that tree, potentially. Oh my goodness, it's just too clean. And now Arkosh are the ones, as soon as you take Leo style out of the equation... Their lineup really doesn't feel that good, especially right now. Again, I would have loved to see the Blink Dagger maybe a little bit earlier from Monkeys Forever, but this is their moment where these damage items that they built up early, as long as they're not the ones dying, everything is going to be felt. That's the second time here where Aoi just feels so strong on this Visage, and he's giving so much vision over to his allies to actually make these initiating plays, and really, Gremlo is the one who is getting a lot of these very important spells, and he's actually finding those bushwhacks that are leading to a lot of his kills. Oh, bottom lane, they're trying to make oh. a nice little play here onto Pale Horus. He does have the arm lift, and he just gets sniped. I thought there was no way. I was like, what is this Willow doing? You don't have a chance of taking down this beefy person, but you got a Dawn Breaker. Oh my goodness. That's a quick oh, kill, man. and now mid lane, Monkey's Forever looking to go in with the Rolling Thunder. He got it, trying to get on top of Guitaro, and... They will be able to find that kill. It's backside though as Leo style chasing down Aoi. The stuns come through. Can they actually chain this one in place? Able to make his way back across and Aoi will go down. Leo style on 60 HP. Manages to keep himself alive. Oh, MJZ. Is he fine? Ooh. Yeah. Monkeys. Okay. He wants to go for the swash. He's going to go ahead and find the ogre here. And he's oh, actually, wait. he's dead to this. He's dead. <laughs> Ward in the mid lane. Just saw him the whole time. Gremlo now in trouble as well. Has an acorn shot, but I don't think it matters as Leo style will finish off the kill. Uh, just stop giving Leo kills. It, it just feels like he's going to start snowballing any second here. He already is pretty much uncontested whenever those fights and those abilities don't end up landing on him. And I think really from Pale Horse, we need to see that mirror almost performance coming in from leo style in game one because he is struggling a little bit to find those same plays he only has 20 dual damage to his name they need to figure out another way to enable this lc just a little bit more he's going for that shadow blade as opposed to the blink dagger a decision that i hope he's not going to regret but at the same time they need someone who's going to go in for them i think monkey's also being a thousand gold away from his own blink dagger we might see these plays really stall out from arkosh and they can't afford that because Look at Leo style. Just Howie doing whatever he wants. Manages to scout them here. The rest of the team trying to rotate over, but he does not have any chance of making it out of here. They okay. don't really have a way to stay on top of the Ember. And the Legion, he walks in, tries to go for the duel here, but in comes the Dawnbreakers. She just stuns up one, kills the other. They manage to take down this Legion, and Monkeys Forever, he's on the side. He doesn't have the Rolling Thunder quite yet. Activates that Pig Bull, trying to survive, but Gremlo. 
Wait, what? How did he get pushed to the low ground there? That was interesting. Okay, Kremlo. Oh, he gets sniped once again. Monkey's Forever, the only surviving member of Arkosh here. And Frank oh, man. wants to make that uh, a five, but he's just going to go ahead and meteor hammer down this tower, chip it some more. Yeah, is it, they really still aren't done in the Solar Guardian. They need to make some more split up plays. They need to force this ability out of Frank before they can even look for a lot of those early kills. In the next 70 seconds, I feel like they need to do something. And uh, Pale Horse, he keeps on leading with the press the attack to farm these waves. I don't think he's dead in the mid lane. The 3x multicast kind of makes me think otherwise, but. He can't arm a toggle time, off with the Ignite, so it's like he. he it's kind of like being in the Venomancer situation with an arm light. Like, you. It, it like you have to hold off on using that. Oh man! And then you look at the Drow, who is just accelerating and playing on the absolute other side of the map, and we're not seeing that same pale horse Drow who gets run around in her own triangle, who gets chased. It just feels like the other core members of Lava are just constantly making these plays. Now another haste rune for Leo style, just playing so well versus a very low lockdown lineup on Arkosh. Oh. I think we got to see something. Yeah, bottom Frank. Bottom lane. Yeah, they're going for Frank here. A nice bots in from Canis Volpus. Fortification on the creep wave. Helping secure that one. They actually come in on Leo style. Again, he's got that haste ring like you talked about. The chains comes through. Leo style. He just picks up a quick one onto Canis Volpus. They got no cash for this guy. There's going to be the curse crown with the Yules. Gremlo just going to get picked off here. No problem by the Dark Willow. Now he's stuck in the trees, man. He's got to get out of here. Nice disarm from Monkeys. Able to buy some time for Owie. Will he be able to finish on the Dark Willow? Up onto the high ground he goes, and he will be just fine. The D-Ward now coming in as they uh, saw that auto attack. Oh, Monkey still manages to snipe him, but I don't know if you noticed, Pale Horse is dead in the mid lane. Yep, it was just the combination of, I think, the Ogre and the Drow. He's just playing a little bit too far alone, and Kataro, I mean, the Drow got the kill. It, it's just... The, the nightmare situation where it's carry on carry action and with his own shadow blade he caught the lc who continuously again uses that press the attack to farm with these waves as fast as he can but we need to see some drastic change in this play because you've got the shadow blade look for some of these pickups try to split up your opponents a little bit more my big concern is you've got some incredibly big items down the pipeline for lava katara's looking out the bkb leo Stout just bought a full kai assange and he is just fearless. Once he gets this axe, He's level 17, just, man. Yeah, it, it just is a huge problem that they need to kill him. They need to kill him numerous times, it feels like, at this rate. But that's where Hail Horse in the mid lane. They've He's got under the sentry. a sentry. Yeah. The combo. yeah, they have just have no play to make. And unfortunately, it's all going to come back to Monkeys and whether or not he can find some huge play with this role. And because he's a pretty weak target here, but... They go in, they duel up hey. the Ogre, but again, the Dawnbreaker just comes right through. They get stunned up. He finally gets the kill. Pale Horse might be able to survive this one, but a huge Terrorize catches too. And it's just Monkeys trying to run away now, but a sick gust from Kataro finds him into the Meteor Hammer. It connects. Dawnbreaker comes through, oh. finishes off that kill. It just feels so good. Oh, man. Canis I... Volpus trying to make it back to the base. And oh, no. it's Confine the Searing Chains. And then a nice uh, Bramble Maze to follow. A buyback from Monkeys, even. As there's no mana left on Leo style. Monkeys. Caught by the Curse Crown. Owie comes in. Drops one bird. But mid lane, they're losing their tower. It's just been Kataro and the Dawnbreaker here working on this. He might yeah, be able to man. finish off this Willow. He does Ooh. get vision for a moment. Does need to be careful. Yeah, as soon as the Ember's back on the map, a uh, level 18 Ember now, who uh, unfortunately for Leo style, uh, backpacked his Kai Assange and then TP'd uh, out with it still on the stash. Uh, it's kind of funny over there. I was so gonna say, is it in stash? Where did it go? It's gonna, he's oh, getting okay. it back. It's getting delivered getting right now, okay. <laughs> But at, this, at the same time, it, it's still just so chaotic for Arkosh to actually find these fights. I mean, I think Canis Volpus is looking for his own Kai Assange and then queuing up the BKB afterwards. But we're still not seeing that concise play. We're still not seeing them ever feel comfortable enough to make that big push towards that bottom lane. I think if they forced Lava to play in a single area, then maybe they could get these almost encouraging engagements. But... It's just simply a DD rune. Frank tanks for the Roche Pit. Now Qatar has an Aegis to play around with. They just keep on finding these breakaways on the sides of the map. And then Leo Style by himself pushes the bottom lane. Nobody reacts in time. And now everybody is going to be able to refocus mid. Even if they do catch the Ember Spirit, 
But Frank is just always there with the Soul Guardian. Soul Guardian and a pipe as soon as he lands. And I think the damage coming from Arkosh just isn't amounting to really anything. And they're scrambling for these Blink Daggers. But unfortunately, I think their time to get these kills are passing. And Owie. Ooh. Yeah, just melted here by the Dark Willow. Level 13 at this point. Palehor is walking in, going Ooh. for the duel. He does get it, but it's just... It's getting turned right around. Winner goes to the Dark Willow. And Monkeys... Just gonna roll away. Kanan's Vault was a nice split earth there, trying to buy him some time, but a four staff forward there from MJZ to just hold him in place. And it's gonna be another kill for the Ember, and that oh. is it. The GG comes out. They know their time is up here on Arkosh. And I mean, what a nice Dawnbreaker pick for Lava. Of course, they did have last pick, the thing that we keep talking about that all these teams desire so heavily, but you just simply couldn't win a lot of the duels that you started, I think. That's where they had such a robust lineup in the Lava side. If you didn't play around that early timing, where again, we're playing towards Monkey's Strengths, where he gets his level 6, he gets out onto the map, we try to refocus the game. I just think Arkosh lost their focus. It looked a lot better early on. I felt like they were definitely playing a little bit more up to snuff, especially around that 12, 14 minute mark. But then... Leo style just decides to style on you and it just felt like he was really uncontestable every single play he made was just working out in their last two hero picks or actually three hero picks that Arkosh could have gone for to try and counter that ember it just wasn't enough it was good maybe in theory but they were banking on this again very tempo heavy oriented lineup and they had the west track to keep that tempo to keep that pace on the buildings they just weren't able to bring the fight and then win the fight versus Lava. And what a frustrating game for Pale Horse yet again. I feel like every single time, he's just having a real rough one. Yeah, it it, it really has just not been a, a good day for Arkosh going 0-4. and four. Pale Horse having a super rough day in, in nearly every single one of these games. But uh, yeah, Aoi couldn't even help bring a victory to the side of Arkosh. And I believe with that loss, they are uh, guaranteed out of the tournament. I believe that's going to net them ninth place in the groups. I'll have to do some quick maths later, but um, I'm pretty sure that is going to be GG for Arkosh. So uh, they're going to go back to sleep until the next tournament, I believe is how that works. Um, but we're not done. We got one more series here today. Like we did mention, uh, Lava, they're doing it two, uh, two series back to back, this time going against their former sponsor, Thunder Predator, which was uh, previously no ping, a tournament, uh, a matchup that we have been waiting for for quite a long time. I know everyone here has been wondering when's Thunder Predator playing X Thunder Predator. Well, it's right now. It's next. It's coming up in just a moment, everyone. So stay tuned. We got a, a real sick series to round out the night here on the Pro Series Season 9. So stay tuned. We'll see you in just a little bit.